How's it going everyone? So Apple this morning released a beta 3 of iOS 18.5. And so in this video, we're gonna go ahead and go through all the changes and stuff that Apple added on its latest version for the developer beta. So that means within 24 hours, the public beta to this beta 3 should also be available for everybody else who's a part of the public beta. So as always, timestamps and everything will be in the description down below for your pleasure. So let's start off with compatible devices. So long as your iPhone can support iOS 18, the list hasn't changed. And alongside with this beta 3 update, these other devices also received a beta update of their own. Apple Vision, Watch OS, iPad OS, TV OS, the complete list is right there as well as the build number. So here it is right here, and the beta 3 update was around one gigabyte. But now we have it installed on our device, and to be quite honest, there hasn't been any new features added. All this update was mainly focusing on, it seems like, is bug fixes, which we'll go through it right now. For example, the first bug fix I noticed can be located if you go into your iPhone settings, and then previous, that's an interesting bug right there. <laughs> but if we exit out of here and go to the main page, if we go in general, and you go into Apple Care and Warranty. Previously, this part used to be buggy where it would just give us a blank screen saying unavailable, but now it actually will load and show us our eligible Apple devices that can be used for Apple Care. And if you have a policy that's activated, it'll also display it right here as well. Now, if you live in India or you find yourself in India, iMessage RCS is now compatible there to more carriers than ever before, as well as Airtel can now support 5G standalone. If you go into your main iPhone settings and tap on cellular, and on this page, click on cellular data and options. And in the voice and data section in here, you'll now see a new 5G standalone to enable. You can now enable or disable from here. And then if you're one of the few people that actually have your hands on an Apple Vision, congratulations. But there is now a new splash screen that I missed, but there's now a new spatial gallery app section added. Another thing that got added is in the news app. By launching a news app, we're welcome with a new redesigned splash screen, giving us more information that there's now a new cooking food category for the Apple news. And you just tap start cooking, it'll take us directly to the new category. Now, unfortunately, the Apple features that was removed, that's wild to me, they keep removing it and adding it, is the photo app. If you go all the way down to the very bottom, you know, in your recently deleted album, by launching here and unlocking, Apple, unfortunately, the delete all button right here is still officially removed from Apple. It's interesting because they added it and then they removed it and then they added it and now it's removed again. And even in beta three, it's still not back, unfortunately. Another bug that we were experiencing can be located in control center by adding control and we type in home or home kit. The home kit widget looks to be back in working order. So Apple did fix that bug where you can now select that tab and give yourself this window now. So that seems like Apple has resolved this. But unfortunately with this update, we still don't have the smart Apple intelligence battery feature, which will display like the time charge it'll take to fully charge an iPhone if you just plug it in. That doesn't seem like it's coming in iOS 18 now. It seems like it'll be ready for iOS 19. But something that I did notice is airdrops. Now whenever I airdrop an image from one device to the other, another fix, that I've been seeing online, people have been reporting on Reddit, is the wireless CarPlay functionality seems to be working better than previously. But in my opinion, only time will tell. This is just day one, just been a few hours with this update. So it's hard to really tell if Apple really did fix that random CarPlay drop while using Apple CarPlay. But as of right now, it seems like Apple is currently doing a week to week update now. So next week we should be seeing beta four come available in the market, which hopefully this one resolves some of the bugs, but also give us back some of those recently removed features permanently back on our iPhones. But it's obvious June 9th is when WWDC will be finally unveiled. And this will be our first introduction to the official redesign of iOS 19. And with these recent beta updates for iOS 18.5, it definitely does look like Apple is primarily focusing on iOS 19 instead of iOS 18 now in terms of giving us unique new features. But overall, with a few hours with this device, I have noticed that thermal temperatures are better controlled than previously as this phone hasn't really overheated on me yet. Battery life has been consistent, just like the previous, the beta two update hasn't really been giving me any battery issues. In terms of animation issues, there's no animations whatsoever that I noticed. Animation is very smooth and quick. So let's go ahead and see what Geekbench scores we are getting. 
So let's go ahead and officially do the Geekbench score and see what numbers we, we are experiencing. So I'm gonna run the Geekbench. All right, and here's our results, 3,700. So single score, I wanna say it improved from the previous Geekbench score. And then 78 seems like the normal one that we have last time. If we go in history right now, they mean to do that. Get out of here. CPU history. Yes, so our single score did actually improve. As well as the multi-score. Holy cow, this is the highest it's been since a while. As you can see, the previous beta, beta 2, our multi wasn't that high. Now, if I take the thermal gun real quick and see what max temperatures we reached. It looks like we did reach 70, uh, not 70, 98 Fahrenheit, it seems like. Which is quite hot. And now it's cooling off, of course, because we are done with the gig bent. But uh, let me see. That's yeah, pretty hot. Okay, so I want to say thermo issue hasn't really been fully resolved. This is pretty hot. It's hotter than the previous test. And yeah, I could feel the frame pretty warm. But impressive multi-score, but not as well as compared with the public software that's available for iOS 18.4. This is our 18.4 numbers, and the multi-score is still much better. So we did receive slightly less better performance number on the beta as of right now we are on beta 3, this is beta 2, and this is beta 1. And this is the official iOS 18.4. So still not perfected, Apple's still tuning the performance. So again, this is why it's always advised only use the beta, beta profiles for your iPhone on a secondary device, not on your primary because as the results right there, we are experiencing slightly less performance numbers because the proof is right there. The beta basically is out messing up our performance. Our phone could have performed a lot better on the official version of iOS 18.4. So again, install the beta at your own risk. I have multiple devices as a backup in case this does brick or just messes up my phone enough that I can't really use this on a daily basis. And then interesting enough for the beta 3 update, the release notes are exactly the same like the previous release notes. So it's really hard to tell that Apple's even trying at this point. Again, it's obvious Apple's main focus is iOS 19 now. And for reference, I'll be sure to include the developer release note from Apple in the description down below for those who are interested. But this is exactly the same that was found on, on beta 2. But other than that, there you guys have it. That is everything you need to know about the beta 3 update. Again, the public version should be released sometime during today or tomorrow, likely. As we are going back to the week to week update now, finally. But other than that, there you guys have it. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to leave this video a like because this video is primarily powered by you guys, the viewers. So thank you so much for stopping by and watching the video and hitting that like button. I like this allows me to have the freedom to actually make videos like this instead of integrating like VPNs and such in my videos. I just like to get straight to the point. So thank you for supporting the channel. So those that continue supporting these updated videos for iOS, Apple latest iOS updates really does mean a lot. Anyways, if you wish to watch more, I have these two other videos right there for you. Top one is suggested from YouTube, and the bottom one is my most recent video. Thank you so much for watching.